Hello and welcome to our Ragnarok special. In this video, we're going on a virtual tour of Odda, visiting 19 filming locations in and around the town that doubles as Edda in the Norwegian Netflix series Ragnarok. Odda has a population of 7,025 inhabitants and is just over five hours away from Oslo by car, lying at the base of Sørfjord in the county of Vestland. We start the tour four kilometers north of Odda, arriving at the real-life counterpart of Util Industries, Boliden Odda. Established in 1924, the factory employs just over 300 individuals and is primarily known for the production of zinc. Incredibly, the events in the show regarding water supply contamination actually happened in real life. Up until the 1970s, the factory discharged industrial waste directly into the fjord. As a result, in the 1980s, zinc levels in the water were 600 times higher than they are today, which led to prohibitions on eating fish from the fjord. Fifteen years ago, the levels of cadmium detected in the soil of some of the residential areas were 10 times higher than government limits. Eventually, Moliden did address the contamination with a range of measures, including storing industrial waste in rock caverns from 1986 onwards. Let's hope there aren't any leaks, eh? Speaking of industrial waste, three kilometers south of Odda, there's a viewpoint where we caught a dramatic glimpse of Buabren, one of the arms of the Folgefona glacier where Util Industries stored industrial waste. Stops 3 to 15 are all within walking distance, so we've produced a map for your convenience. You'll find a download link in the description. We're headed to Almerke Parkering, which has two hours of free parking in the town center. Let's take a small detour and walk up Røldalsveien, taking a moment to admire Odda's charming architecture, and then returning along the E13 to the very spot where the story begins in episode one, where Venke and Vortan encounter Magme for the first time. More commonly known as Odin, Vortan is actually familiar to those from English-speaking countries. The day Wednesday, or Vortan's day, is named after him. Continuing along the same road, this is the salon run by Gri's mother, which sits below the apartment where Gri lives with her parents Björg and Jan. The next stop is the Netflix rock, which mysteriously appeared in 2019 with the following text in runes. Ragnarok will come on the 31st of January 2020. It could use a good scrub though, you hear me Netflix? In the summer, there's a small town square where vendors sell fruit directly from the local farms. Although the Hardanger district makes up just 1.6% of Norway's area, it produces an incredible 40% of Norway's fruit. As we have experienced growing strawberries, we know that only one or two strawberries from each plant reach this size. So although they seemed expensive at 50 krona per punnet, we were looking at the largest, juiciest strawberries harvested from around 10 to 15 plants. Odda Spa is the supermarket where Venke worked as a cashier. As I walked down the aisles, I strategically avoided the gaze of the locals, who must have thought I was some kind of lunatic obsessed with filming groceries. I was searching for a sign. Would I also meet a wise old cashier who could change my fortunes for the better? I thought I sensed something. Unfortunately, it was just the scent of my crotch odor that I had developed over the course of the day. Thankfully, I was saved by social distancing in the checkout line. Next, we head just behind Odda Taxi and find a boardwalk that was used for a couple of dialogue scenes in season one. Then it's onward to Odda Church a key location for several memorable scenes in the show. Odda Church is associated with the Church of Norway and features a capacity of 500 individuals. According to their website, the current structure dates back to 1870, but a stone church has stood in this place since at least the late 13th century. We were initially excited about having a meal at the Edda Grill. Unfortunately, Odda Grill doesn't enjoy the same reputation as its on-screen counterparts. It's rated 3.5 on Google, with one reviewer boldly declaring that, instead of eating hair, they would have preferred to have eaten their own socks after hiking Trolltunga. Next, we cross the bridge that spans the river Oppo. It served as the location for the scene where Magne meets Votan and Iman, who is now the embodiment of Freya. We continue along the road to the Esso Service Center, where Harry the Mechanic is employed. He is the embodiment of Tyr, the god of war whom the day Tuesday is named after. Without a doubt the most interesting stop on this tour, the abandoned factory doesn't have a name, but it appears to have been connected via cable car to Odda Smeltiverk, which went bankrupt in 2003. Sitting at the water's edge is the location of the electric, pardon the pun, season one finale between Magne and Vidar. If you're feeling brave, make sure you have appropriate footwear and step inside the abandoned factory.
It's time to return to the car and drive south towards Odda Schukkeheim, a hospital which was built in 1976. In the show, it's the location of the care home where Votan is resident. Continuing in the car, we arrive at Odda Junior High, the school that doubles as Edda High School. It opened in 1959 and its website promotes its music and sports facilities, which are evident in small details everywhere you look. Norway's culture of transparency appears in the architecture which emphasizes natural daylight and in the ability to view and download the school's weekly lesson plans. I have to admit I was blown away by the picturesque surroundings. We certainly didn't have fjords, glaciers or waterfalls at my school in the London borough of Hounslow. Next is the infamous Jutel House, which is actually a CG building superimposed over Viking Haug, an apartment hotel which isn't shy about its relationship with the show. It's worth driving up just for the panoramic view over Odda. If you're thinking of staying here, a three-bedroom apartment will set you back £150 per night, which actually isn't bad for Norway, where a typical hotel room is usually about £100 per night. We're here at Jutelheim, trying out the local fruit. Now, Norwegian fruit surprised because the long daylight hours and the colder temperatures actually make for a better fruit. So let's try these cherries, Morella cherries. These are amazing. Super juicy, sweet, sour, everything. Delicious. You gotta get some more. For most Norwegians, Odda is famous for being the base for Trolltunga, one of the most popular hikes in Norway with around 80,000 people completing it every year. If you're here between the months of June and September and in good physical condition, you can join them, but be warned. It's a demanding hike only suitable for those with mountain hiking experience. I'm currently working on a video guide for the hike. Once it's uploaded, I'll put a link in the description and on the end screen. The hike to Trolltung is a knee-shattering 20 to 38 kilometer round trip, depending on the start point. But persevere and you'll be rewarded with a dramatic view of the troll's tongue. The same location where Vidar eats the heart of a reindeer at the end of the very first episode. Just remember to keep your clothes on though. And that brings us to the end of the tour. If you enjoyed this video, click that subscribe button so you'll know when the next video is out. And if you think I missed any important locations, do leave a comment below. Be excellent to each other and I'll see you in the next episode.